been toying with the concept of Atili Lukane for quite some time and imagined a short informal series of podcasts in stark contrast to the more epic productions of Soul Searching, which I recently did for an internet radio station. I was working on the first release during this Christmas recess when the news came through yesterday of Ramdas's death. So I quickly chose to dive in the deep end with this as the first in the series. In my early 30s, I visited Mark Kahn, a Johannesburg psychotherapist, to find perspective. After one of his counseling sessions, Mark gave me two audio cassette tapes having some recordings of Ramdas's speeches. These had an extraordinarily transformative effect on my life. Ramdas had shown me how love and oneness can become the core of one's spirituality, in contrast to what the Jehovah's Witnesses had taught me that finding favor with God was more about ticking the correct boxes on one's personal scorecard of complex dogmatic rules and regulations. Those two recordings led me to seek out more of Ramdas's teachings from his tape library, an immensely challenging task in an age before the internet. But cynical me, jaded by the way Jehovah's Witnesses had treated me, I needed to first test Ramdas before I could take him and his teachings seriously. I needed to make sure that he was authentic and not merely an American brand with moneyed backing. So, I enrolled on one of Ramdas's retreats on the island of Maui in Hawaii. It was a five-day event, co-hosted by Deepak Chopra. Deepak hosted the morning sessions with polished PowerPoint presentations and eloquent reasoning, and then his security detail speedily whisked him and his wife away just as we broke for lunch. I ate my lunch in silence on that first day and, in no mood for conversation, I hastily returned to the meeting hall to meditate. But there, alone in the room in his wheelchair, sat Ramdas, waiting for people to drift in for the afternoon session. I awkwardly took my place and greeted him. He beckoned that I should approach. Then he hugged me with such warmth, sincerity and tenderness. I could not hold back the tears as I said to him, Ramdas, I love you so very much. I told him how he, through his material, had positively altered the course of my life. I love you too, Tom. There, in that simple moment, all my doubt about this man's authenticity melted away, and I realized that this amazing being was not the byproduct of some clever marketing. There was no facade. He was the epitome of sincerity, humility, and love. I returned to Maui a few more times to stay with him in his home. We talked as if old friends. We shared ideas and commonalities that we found in our respective lives, as gay men and reminiscing about the way hallucinogens had opened new spiritual vistas for us. We swam together, chanted together, and soaked together in his jacuzzi. He taught me how love always transcends dogma. One day, on a journey back from the beach, he said to his friend, Turn right here. But Ramdas, the highway is a bit further on. No, no, turn down this road. A block or so further along that road, Ramdas pointed to a building on the right. Here it is. This is my gift to you, Tom. He pointed to a kingdom hall of Jehovah's Witnesses. Thanks, Ramdas, I replied. Thanks a lot. We giggled at the absurdity of it all. That moment stuck with me, and years later I began to realize that the Kingdom Hall was symbolic. It was, like Ramdas had always suggested, the placing of a photo of one's enemy alongside the other sacred artifacts one has on one's puja table, so that one might learn to let go one's disquiet for such a person. I needed to learn to accept and then love the Jehovah's Witnesses. After all, they were an early stepping stone on my spiritual journey. In July this year, Ramdas, accompanied by a medical team and a circle of loving friends, made his pilgrimage to the opening of the Taos Neem Karoli Baba Ashram and Temple in New Mexico, which was his dream and future vision for us all. Also, this year, Ramdas completed the movie of his story, Becoming Nobody. Ramdas finally finished his work here. I, for one, 
remain in eternal gratitude for the way he lovingly gave of himself to change the lives of so many people, mine included. Thank you, my friend and mentor. I love you very much.